This is KGW News at 11. We begin tonight with developing news. Three people were shot and killed in North Portland and authorities are still on the hunt for a suspect. Welcome to KGW News at 11. I'm Blair Best. There have now been 17 homicides in Portland so far this year. And at this point, police have not released a motive in today's shooting. And Art Edwards has the latest on that investigation. Portland police spent several hours out here at the scene, gathering evidence, talking to people who may have seen or heard anything that was related to this shooting. They've also deployed personnel from several different units inside the Portland Police Bureau to help with the investigation. North Precinct officers responded to a report of a shooting at North Foss Avenue and North Foss Court just after 1230 in the afternoon. When they got there, they found two cars damaged in the intersection. There were three gunshot victims in the sedan who were pronounced dead at the scene. Every homicide that we respond to is significant, uh, but anytime we have something like this where we have multiple victims, it just adds to the urgency. Um, we know that there's a tremendous amount of community concern, and we want to assure the community that our effort is to uh, determine what really happened here, uh, and find who's responsible, and make arrests where appropriate. This incident has touched a nerve in the city. Multnomah County's District Attorney, Mike Schmidt, issued a statement that said in part, this loss magnifies the gun violence crisis facing our communities. He added his office would hold those responsible for gun violence accountable. Portland's police chief was among those who responded to the scene. He said this shooting in broad daylight in a residential neighborhood is another tragic example of how gun violence can affect our community terribly. After being briefed on the shooting, Mayor Ted Wheeler took to social media, saying in a tweet, this devastating violence must stop and it will take all of us working together to restore peace to Portland. Portland police have not released any information about a motive for the shooting or information about those involved in the shooting. No arrests have been made. Portland's police chief and detectives are encouraging anyone with any information about this shooting to call Portland police. Reporting from North Portland, Art Edwards, KGW News. And we have new details tonight after a shooting at the Alibi Tiki Lounge in North Portland. One person was hurt and taken to the hospital. His injuries are not life threatening. Now the shooting shooting happened Friday night. The lounge is near North Interstate and in Saver. Now, as you can see, dozens of PPB officers were on scene and Portland police say they ran into an angry crowd while investigating and one officer was punched. No one has been arrested. Well, eight people have been arrested in a human trafficking sting in Lake Oswego. And tonight, it appears one of the suspects is an assistant principal in the Centennial School District. The district says it was notified of Terrence Schloth's arrest Friday. Lake Oswego police listed him as one of the suspects caught Thursday in the sting. Officers used decoys to contact men who then offered to pay the decoys for sex. Police say Sloth gave them a fake name at first, so he was taken to the Clackamas County Jail to be identified. The Centennial School District says he has now been placed on administrative leave. Well, turning now to the weather, here is a live look at our Timberline Sky Cam. There's a fresh layer of powder resting on the mountains and the coast range and other higher elevation spots also saw more snow today. We'll bring you the latest from the coast range in a moment, but first, let's bring in meteorologist Joe Ranieri. And Joe, just how much snow did we see in the mountains today? Well, over the last 24 hours, closing in on close to about two feet of snow outside Timberline Lodge and Mount Hood Meadows wasn't far behind. Uh, Mount Bachelor was right around 20 inches and we're late March. Now, it's not uncommon to do some spring skiing and yeah, with all those numbers I just told you, there's going to be plenty of fresh powder. Uh, over the next couple of days tonight, we could be seeing those snow showers taper off a little bit, but all the watches and warnings have expired. But as we look at the radar, uh, parts of Portland are dry right now, but just the east side, we're starting to see some showers starting to roll through at, at this hour. And again, heading into tomorrow, Blair, there's still a chance we could be seeing some pockets of a, a mix of some rain and snow showers down to the valley floor. Again, that snow level is down to 500 feet. As we put future casts into motion, we'll go through tomorrow morning. Have it stopped here about 730. We'll see a mix of some rain and snow, basically 500 feet and higher. That's where you could be seeing some light accumulation 
it doesn't stick around for too long because our temperatures are going to be well above freezing for your daytime highs tomorrow. But it's going to be kind of a cold and showery start as we go into the morning hours. The threat of any accumulating snow is really out of the picture. There could be some snowflakes in the air, and that is about it. And heading into the afternoon, we'll continue to see some scattered showers. I, I do have a couple of nice days ahead. Of course, Oregon spring break is right now, and uh, you could be looking at maybe two, three days with some sunshine, but it's not going to be as warm as I think a lot of people like. I'll have details on that coming up. All right, Joe, thanks so much. Well, this morning, many of you woke up to a dusting of snow across our area, especially at higher elevations. And while it didn't stick around for long, Alma McCarty was in the coast range as many travelers began spring break in not so spring like conditions. Although the snow was starting to melt around midday, there was a lot more of it earlier Saturday morning, and it came as a welcome surprise to drivers heading to the coast. Whether the start of spring break or a quick day trip, travelers found themselves in a winter wonderland winding their way west. We didn't check the weather, so we encountered some snow on the hill. It was, it said it was a winter storm on our uh, map app, but it really wasn't that bad. We did not expect there to be snow, so yeah, it's, it's really pretty and the roads look like they're being kept well. I feel like the weather changes so much from like downtown Portland to the coast that like it could really be anything. I'm not like completely surprised, but I'm just happy that it looks so pretty. Like I love all the snow on the trees. It's like a snow globe. Cloudy skies cleared and despite some slowdowns and slush, drivers reported minimal issues. The driving there was smooth. Uh, the views were beautiful and we can't wait to continue on to the coast. Robert Trujillo and his girlfriend, visiting from Seattle and California, arrived in Portland Friday and made the trip to Cannon Beach. I saw the sun come out, so I think uh, it wasn't really that bad of a storm, if, there, if there, you can even call it a storm. He absolutely loves the snow. Kevin Lease brought his dog Frankie. Come here, Frankie. Come here, boy. To enjoy the short-lived snowfall. Oh, I was surprised. I live on Germantown Road and woke up and had probably about a half an inch of snow at my place. And and decide, well, if there's snow at my place, there's probably snow on the coast range. In higher elevations, ODOT continues to urge caution, especially when driving in the Cascades and Coast Range. They're monitoring the situation with overnight concerns about refreezing slush on the roads. In Clatsop County, Alma McCarty, KGW News.